Hi everyone, it's the English Simmer here and as I'm sure you can tell as I am gripping on to these boxes for dear life, I have an unboxing for you all today. I am sponsored by Elgato and they have actually gifted me with a ton of new upgrades for my setup so big thank you to Elgato for these but we're basically gonna be unboxing them, talking about them, having my first hands-on with them and also just all of my thoughts and feelings about them. So we have the new low profile arm mic, we have the Elgato face cam, and then I also have a cheeky little stream deck upgrade. Not one, but two stream deck upgrades. I feel like a little T-Rex right now. Look at this arm. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna start off with the one that I personally find the most exciting because I have had the same microphone arm pretty much since I started my YouTube channel, like since buying it, and it's squeaky as heck. This just looks so cool. It's the Wave mic arm, but the low profile one. So basically, I can have this sitting under my screens if I want to, or I can still have it off to the side. But basically, I'll be able to see my screens over it, and I'll also hopefully be able to see my keyboard. Oh, I will say, the squeak on opening that box is not my favorite sound in the world. However, I do like how Elgato with this one have actually gone for a full cardboard box instead of like their usual, like they are cardboard, but they feel like a lot more glossy. And I don't know if they're fully recyclable. Whereas this one is just cardboard, which is really nice to see. So we obviously have all the measurements here and just like the, the how to, use it but the desk clamp pretty much works the exact same way as all Elgato products. If you've ever seen one of my Elgato videos before you will know how they work and what they look like. Just taking this out of the box feels chunky as anything. This is a chunky chunky boy but the quality like it feels premium. Just to give you a few more bits of information. So we have low profile design for an unobstructed desk and on-screen appearance, very handy. Integrated cable management, which I need to get my cable management sorted. It is atrocious. Whenever I take a behind the scenes picture, I am so embarrassed by my cable management. And right now my microphone wire is literally just like, I don't, think you can see it, but it's basically just like hanging uh, in between my desk. So that's very unfortunate. So that's gonna come in handy for me. Rotatable ball head permits optical mic positioning, tension, adjustable joints lets you set swing and fall resistance, all metal anti-torsion construction, and Elgato multi-mount compatible, which the multi-mount is literally the savior of my setup. It's currently holding you little guys on the camera. And I've had it for like over a year now and it's still holding up and hasn't loosened whatsoever. This being like black on black isn't the handiest thing in the world, but this is what it looks like. So this is the end that goes into the clamp. And then I was kind of worried about this with being low profile. Sometimes I record videos like this and I need my mic arm like literally up in the air because I'm stood up right now. However, it can pretty much go like further than a 90 degrees angle so you can actually still stand it up. And then obviously this is where your mic attaches onto. And again, it's kind of like the multi-mount. So you have this little section on it. You can just unscrew it and there's the rotatable. And then just to show you the cable management, it has these funky little magnets on. So basically you can run your cable through here and just keeps everything super tidy. And then that just like magnet sizes back on. <gasps> Smart. I actually didn't notice this whilst I was unboxing the low profile microphone, but in the box, it actually includes the adapters that you will need for your microphone and the mic stand. So usually it will be one of these two adapters that you'll need for a microphone to attach. Very, very glad they included these because I was using the original ones that came with my Wave 3 microphone 
microphone, which again is the Elgato mic that I've been using for like over a year now. And they weren't the best quality. This thread has actually been stuck on this extender. I've tried to get it off, as you can see from like the little marks on it, and it's just stuck. So I'm very, very glad that these definitely seem to be a higher quality and also like a little bit thicker. So hopefully they're a bit easier to get on and off than the originals. And they also include the little Allen key. As you can see, I am currently setting up the low profile mic arm. And I was actually running into an issue where I was attaching my Wave 3 mic and then it was just kind of drooping and seemed too heavy. But you can just tighten up the bolts on the mic arm and then you can tighten it to the strength that you need to hold your microphone. So sorry for not including these in the unboxing. I just wanted to let you know that they are in fact in there. Don't miss them if you are buying this and you're unboxing it yourself. They were in like a little paper baggie that I just did not see in the box. Next up, we have the Stream Deck XL. I am currently using the Stream Deck Mark II, which I will show you because that was also sent to me by Elgato. So satisfying. So Stream Deck XL, basically a bigger Stream Deck. So you have the instruction booklet, obviously. Am I gonna be able to take you out without damaging you? Hopefully I am. Oh, this actually feels like it's got the same stand as the Elgato Stream Deck Mark II. I've never had an XL, yeah, so it does have the, uh, the more prominent stand. Ooh, I like how that separates. It's kind of just got those like grooves. Again, I think that's held together by magnets. I will say with these like new stands, they are just plastic. I, before upgrading to the Stream Deck XL and the Mark II, which this is the Mark II, just so you can all see, I was using their original Stream Deck, just the Mark I, and it came with this like plastic stand. And whilst this like did the job for years and like never ever failed me, I will say this had like three heights that you could set your Stream Deck and it's like not, a major deal breaker for me because I used it on the highest setting anyway, which is kind of where the Mark II and the XL sits anyway. But these new ones don't actually have like a height option. Like they don't have an adjustable stand. So you can't really choose the angle that you want it to sit at. It's kind of just like a get what you're given scenario. This is the Mark II, which if you didn't know, the Elgato Stream Deck Mark II come with face plates so you can actually remove the face plate from the stream deck and Elgato very kindly because I am partnered with them used some of my art and made me this custom face plate so basically all you have to do it's a little bit tricky you kind of got to get like your nails in there, as weird as it sounds. It feels like you're kind of gonna break it, but you're not. I just tried to pull this off and I did. However, I accidentally hit a button on my stream deck, which wasn't the smartest idea <laughs> and changed all of my OBS settings. So I'm not gonna mess around with that anymore, but basically you can pull this faceplate off and then reattach a new one. And they just kind of clip on. Like I said, it is a little difficult to do. You kind of really have to like pull at the clips, but I mean, the fact that you can change faceplates is pretty damn cool and change the design. Elgato are currently doing like a lot of polls of what colors you wanna see. And I just think this is nice for like customizability. I feel like so many gaming setups and stuff, like you have the options of black, red, or green. I feel like those are like the gaming colors. Whereas with these faceplates, I think they can kind of start like messing around. I personally really would like more pastel and stuff on my personal setup. So fingers crossed that's the way that Elgato are gonna go. And again, it just comes with the plastic stand. With the Stream Deck XL, you actually get a braided cable. So it's a USB to USB-C and it's braided, which you don't find that very often with Elgato cables. Usually they're just kind of like a plastic material. I'm a big fan of braided cords. So that's with the Stream Deck XL. The Mark II that I got just had a plastic cable. And finally, the one that I think most people watching this video are gonna be excited for is 
the Elgato face cam. This is a complete surprise to me. I actually didn't know that Elgato were bringing this out until they did their live stream. And I was so excited for it. So raw video, state of the art Sony sensor, true HD at 60 FPS and Elgato flash memory. I'm actually gonna set this up in this video. I'm gonna show you what it was like before I played around with the settings and then after I played around with the settings. Just so most of you know how I plan to use my face cam, I'm gonna use it, say if I'm doing like top down videos like this and I want a face angle, I'll use it for that. And I'll also use it for streams. Like sometimes I do like building Lego streams. And that's usually when I use my face cam, when I'm recording videos or just like streaming without a second face angle or anything like that, I usually use my big DSLR. I haven't played around with this yet. This is literally my first time seeing it in person. This feels so light. With like the specs that they talked about this, I really wasn't expecting it to be this light, but like that's gonna sit on top of my monitor absolutely a-okay, especially for like how large it is as well. So you have like the glossy Elgato, you actually have, and most webcams don't come with this, but you have a little lens cap on it too, which is a very, very cute little feature. So if you're like me and you're gonna be using this as like a secondary angle or a secondary webcam and you don't wanna get dust on it whilst you're not using it, boom own little dust cap. And then this is like the clip to obviously sit it on top of your monitor if you're gonna use it that way. It is also multi-mount functional. So you can, I think, unscrew that and then you can put this onto your Elgato multi-mount or a tripod if you wanna use a different tripod and you don't wanna use the mount with it. And then in this top section of the box, again, we have the cable for this, which is USB to USB-C. You don't come to my channel for technology, you just come to see how things function and whether someone who isn't super great at technology can figure it out. And usually with Elgato, products. I'm not just saying this because I am sponsored, but usually even I can figure them out. And that's one of their great selling points to me personally. But the face cam is obviously what has the Elgato settings with it. Right now I am recording on my DSLR. I am not a camera technical person. I don't really understand ISO. I know I probably should as a streamer and a YouTuber, but I basically just look at something and I'm like, do I like the way that looks? Yes, do I look okay in it? Fair. I will hit record or I'll hit go live. And I'm like, cool, people can see me, we can interact. That's pretty much my baseline to a camera. So this is my Canon 200D with my Elgato cam link. And then this right here is the out of the box experience when it comes to the Elgato face cam. So I feel like this one is way more exposed and it's also a lot cooler. I am on, I feel like the unpopular opinion side of cameras where I prefer a warmer image. I don't know, I just always have. I have on my mobile screen, I have when it comes to streaming or recording, I just prefer a warmer image. But Elgato, being Elgato, we've seen it with the Stream Deck software. We have seen it with their Wave microphone software. They always have a decent software to back up the hardware that they come out with. Also, can we just say this angle feels real weird for me. I am so not used to one looking at like this monitor for a camera, but also just like you being able to see like the whole of my room. This is so weird. There's too many of me on screen right now. For a person who hates their photo being taken. This is like a lot of like angles and videos happening right now. But I'm gonna go into the actual settings like on a deeper level and find out more about them and explore like what I prefer off screen. However, I did just wanna talk it through with you all. So this is the camera hub. You download this from the Elgato site. And basically what you can do on this software is set up your own settings of how you want your face cam to look. So right now, this is the out of the box experience. I do have my key lights on right now. If I turn them off, this is one, what my DSLR looks like. And because I have to do all of my DSLR settings on the camera itself, 
I actually think with my lights off, the Elgato face cam actually looks a little bit better than my DSLR, but that's because I've played with like ISO and stuff on my camera. So everything's on automatic. This is straight out of the box. If I actually, whoa, if I turn down the exposure on the automatic, I am gonna turn that ISO like right down pretty much. And then we can also change the shutter speed. So I'm gonna stick with that. We also have contrast over here. So you can change how much contrast you have. Saturation, again, I prefer like a warmer tone, but like I'm definitely gonna have to play around. And then weirdly, we also have sharpness. I don't really know why sharpness was included as a setting. It seems a little bit weird. I definitely think it looks better on plus one. I don't know, I feel like the plus two just kind of makes it a bit too sharp for my liking. I kind of like more of a blurred softness to my cameras. And then you also have white balance, which you can set to automatic. And then obviously you can change your temperature from very, very cool to very, very warm. Kind of very reminiscent of the key light themselves. So I'm gonna play around with these settings and see if I can get in looking. To be fair, I'm not too mad at what is currently happening on the Elgato face cam. I did want to give you a comparison with the Elgato face cam and also the Logitech C920, I think is what I used to use. It's like the Logitech camera that basically everyone said to get as a streamer when I was first starting out. So what I have done is I haven't used the zoom on the face cam. I have just like scaled myself up within OBS to kind of give you a shot by shot profile. So this is the Elgato face cam. And then if we head on over to my old face cam, you cannot even tell on this one that I have my key lights on. But the quality difference, I mean, you lot can see it. I very much prefer the Elgato quality of the face cam. I want to hear what you all think of it down below though. Like I said, I'm not going to use this as my main camera. I am thinking of either setting this up as like a second sort of shot maybe for streams or something like that, like a behind the scenes shot. I know I've talked about the face cam a lot, but I did kind of just want to go back to the low profile mic arm because this was the part I was talking about on my old mic arm got super, super wobbly. Whereas this currently it feels pretty stable. I mean, because it's low profile, I'm obviously not gonna be like messing around with this as much because like that's not the main structure for like holding my microphone, this is really the main structure. So I feel like if anything, this could get a little bit looser over time. However, the actual like where the mic stand goes into the clamp won't. I just pulled that out by accident. I'm not gonna be using that much force when I'm actually recording using this, but I will say this is so much heavier than I expected. Whereas the face cam is so much lighter than I expected, but like this obviously feels like it's gonna stand the test of time. So that pretty much wraps up this unboxing quite nicely. I know I talked about the face cam mainly, but I feel like that's the product that a lot of people are wanting to see like the difference and the actual like upgrade that that you can have with it, especially if you don't have a DSLR. And I do wanna reiterate, I am in fact sponsored by Elgato and they did gift me with all of these items for free. But I did wanna give my feedback on some of them. Most of them are upgrades for my setup. When Elgato asked me like what their new range of products I wanted, they were mainly the ones that I knew were gonna be an upgrade to what I currently had. But thank you all so much for tuning in though. I know these videos are a little bit different to what I usually post. And I know I'm not the like most technical person in the world. However, sometimes I just don't think you need to be bogged down with like make model numbers and things like that. And you just wanna see how a product works. I will actually leave all of like the prices down below. Cause I know I didn't talk about them in this video, but if you do wanna check out the prices, I'll leave them in UK and USD. And like I said, I will probably follow up like the next couple of months about how I'm getting along with these products and how I'm feeling about them. Probably won't make like an official video unless you lot wanna see it. I appreciate you all so, so much and I will speak to you all in my next one. Bye now.